it's good that you focus on this, even though this is a very trivial hand from Prefab to River and you played it perfectly fine, but it's very, very good and very crucial. And very often just these in these boring hands that there's so many small details uh, that we can talk about that actually gonna have a big impact on how you perform in the tournament. But you always are oh, standard, 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 and then you always focus on these big pots. You're not gonna see yeah. those small details that actually add up. All right, welcome back everyone. Part two, we're gonna be reviewing some hands with NBK. Counter-Strike Legend, if you've missed part one, uh, we did a podcast together, highly recommend checking it out. And today we're gonna be doing some poker content. I guess those hands were all played during Scoop or? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm quite sure there was a Scoop event. So this uh, tournament itself was a 2K I qualified for, uh, 2K PKO. Yeah. Um, yeah, madness. <laughs> Madness. <clears throat> so preflop, is it a standard defense for you? Would you go a little wider than that? Or is it the bottom? Um, that would be pretty much the bottom of what I would defend. Uh, I just defend especially because we're going three way. Yeah. And it's a hand that does well three way. <clears throat> um, so that, that's the main reason why I would not go too, too much wider in the sense that, uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I'm not good enough for that. So I just try to limit like to playable hands. Yeah, um, that's good. Things I can do with it. Yeah, the 10 8 off or 9 8 off are much better than, let's say, a king 5 off. So uh, exactly. it's it's a little dangerous, though, with these 10 8 offs like, against later positions. It's fine. But let's say if uh, under the gun open raises and middle position calls, you want to be folding these hands uh, 10 8 off, sure. 10 7 off, even jack 9 mm -hmm. off because um, because of the card removal, because it's very likely that one of these players are going to have a queen or 10 or king that blocks your outs to make a straight. So, um, sure. but here button, um, and making a pair with Jack nine off is also not really appealing. Uh, you're going to be have, having top pair, we kicker. you're going to be yeah, very often in a very dicey spot. So you're really hoping to hit a monster hand that you can stack off, right? Two pairs. Trying to straight. make something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here it's much better. A pair is going to be much more valuable in those later positions because they're going to be having um, ace highs, king highs, like ace five suited and all these kind of hands and, and pocket deuces, uh, which they're not going to be playing from early positions so often. So making a top yeah. pair will be a little bit more valuable than I'd say against early middle positions. <clears throat> it gets much more interesting than that. <laughs> all right, he bets out. Yeah, he goes check, check, bet. <clears throat> Um, I mean, because we have still fairly deep stack sizes, um, we have outs, we have a back door that yeah. could work. It's not really going to be too valuable, but, um, it, it can work, um, against their range that is going to be extremely wide. Um, and because of the range that is perceived from me, like he's going to hit my range very much when I'm defending from the big blind, um. Uh, I'm, I'm more on the aggressive side, <laughs> more, more than playing passive, and I like to just put pressure on my opponents. Um, especially in, again, like in, in a 2k where if I hit a, a jack or a 6, um, I just want to take it all yeah. and put variance in my hand. So, um, I think it's fine. I mean, the problem is from a theoretical standpoint you shouldn't be raising because you don't really have that many value hands pocket nines might even be raising pre so you only have the suited combos like nine four suited and four seven suited and then nine seven off and nine seven suited these are the only hands um right. you have some very high equity draws so you can raise seven x in diamonds you can raise five seven ten seven ten six in diamonds those hands which is fine but i think just calling is fine as well um, just, just be aware that you're not going to have so many value hands here. Uh, yeah, what would be your sure. plan if, if let's say some of these players would go all in now? Um, so I, I would still have 40 blinds behind. I would fold pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty easily. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I would like, it would be a snap fold pretty much cause they, they have quite a lot of stacks, uh, quite a lot of, uh, blinds yeah. and with 40 blinds, I'm still pretty comfortable. Um, <laughs> 
and uh and yeah i, I just don't want to get yeah. into that game of like just chasing an open-ended just for the sake of getting a bounty yeah. Yeah. so it was a bounty tournament it was a bounty yeah okay so there, there's this bounty aspect into it was it from the early game um yeah i think it was let me check real quick i think it was really quickly like one of the um because I, I satellited into it uh and it was yeah it was like okay um it, it might was, actually be yeah. close because with the bounty man this can be very close um but yeah i don't mind i mean a freeze out it's a no. clear fall in the bounty it would probably be a bit loosey goosey, but it would definitely not be a, like a huge pun because. Yeah, because it's a bounty. Everything yeah. can be explained. Yeah, That's what <laughs> exactly. Um, on the turn. So. Um, what's your what's your plan on the turn on this? Well, my, my plan is it, is it a good now, card for you? Um. Yeah, it, it's a turn. Uh, I think that that goes into my range very well. Um. Even though it doesn't complete any flush draw, it completes uh, straight draws that I can have two pairs <clears throat> type of hands. Um. So, so my range becomes much more uncapped than his. Um. And so therefore, I think it's a good one to bow. Like he he was still peel. I think a lot of. Uh, a lot of pairs that he has that he has limp pre or like um, I don't know, ten nines mm. uh, like hands like that uh, but it, it still puts me in a position where I can easily then battle on the river because it just shows a lot of strength because again my, my range I think here is is uncapped I can have all the straights all the all the sets you can have some sets as well and especially on the river there's going to be again a lot of good cards for me to borrow and, and to get him out of uh, of his weaker hands so, um, so, so I'm pretty happy with it as long as like an ace or a king queen, like a high card, would have been a bit more painful for me. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, it's just I think it's just a spot where I don't expect a lot of folds. I expect pocket eights to fold against the race more often. So I'm really thinking, yeah, okay, we get him to fold jack ten. Flash draws keep calling. Yeah. Maybe he has something like ace queen, you know, with a backdoor flush draw. Yeah. No, um, no, but it's all right. No, with your equity, you buy a sheep, sheep showdown, so you don't need to have that much for you. So with, if you bet small, it's fine. Like, you shouldn't be shoving yeah. or betting big. Yeah, so I, I, like I, bet, uh, I bet pretty small in order to, to shove river fairly comfortably. Would you um, shove any river yeah, or... Sorry, what? Would you be shoving any river? Um, a lot of them. If, for example, um, yeah, I think I think at this point I shove any river. Uh, because of the the pot size and and the way that I've been playing, I think he, I, I could shove a lot of rivers. <clears throat> and also with his range, that to me there doesn't look doesn't look sorry um and Catholic, he looks pre-capped uh, since he just calls on such a wet board I mm. think he's not super confident about every hand that he has <clears throat> and so again like I, like my idea is just to put a maximum pressure whether I hit or not um, even though I block some of his draws that he's gonna have um, it's it, to me it's it's still like a good spot to bow all the way um, yeah, purely because of, of ranges. That's mm, how I see it. I think, <clears throat> I think this hand, when the diamond doesn't get there, is not a good hand to bluff, to be honest. No. Um, because if he has a good nine, he's not going to fold. So the main way you really can't, especially when the diamond draw breaks, let's say there's a deuce in hearts. Yep. You want to, the main value from bluffing comes folding out better draws. So if he has um, queen, like, Ace eight in diamonds, king eight in diamonds, queen eight in diamonds, check right. eight in diamonds. He has all of those, so this so this is gonna have a significant impact on our EV. Um, if the diamond gets there, it's good because he should be folding nine x because he's gonna have more flushes in his range, and we block flushes. Right. So whenever there is a diamond, you should be bluffing because he's, he cannot have six eight eight seven in diamonds. That all bet the flop call raise ten eight in diamonds. He can't have sure. king eight queen eight ace eight in diamonds. So this is a good 
hand to bluff. In fact, if you have the ten in hearts, would be even better because he can still have ace, yeah, ace. Some... He can have ten eight yeah. in clubs and ace ten in clubs, uh, even jack ten in clubs. Maybe if he's loosey goosey with floating, also queen ten in clubs. Um, yeah. So for that reason, it's it's an okay bluff, but you should really look at the suits. This is a, and this is it's nothing to do with exploiting. It's just the way cards work in this spot and. Sure. Um, whenever you draw, you block the flush. It's a good bluff. But when you block the flush draws, it's not a good bluff. You re you really rely mm -hmm. on him, you know, folding a nine. And to be honest, if there's a f let's say four in in spades on the river, I doubt he's going to be folding a nine uh, ever. Yeah, especially especially <laughs> if he pairs the board. And also, he, he has twenty two big blinds left. Very often there's re-entry stage. They're like, oh, I need a big stack for PKO. It's very I very much yeah. advise at the early stage of a PKO when they're re-entry. You play against these half stacks, people are much more in a gambling mode because That's you true. want to have a big stack and bounties to chase bounties. So you should be very yeah, careful with bluffing. So, um, yeah, he's going to be weak. He's going to just be having pairs most of the time. But I think even if he has something like king seven or nine, you're going to see a call on quite often. Something I've learned um, <laughs> over the past weeks. People always find a good reason to call yeah. in tournament. <laughs> so that's, people just call. <laughs> that's a big thing. They always try. Well, they put you on ten eight. They put you on jack ten. Um, you know, you have ten eight yeah. with a diamond, jack ten and a diamond half pot. But I don't, I don't, uh, I don't hate his call here when he calls with a nine. It's super easy to overbluff this spot, even though you can yeah, easily shove true. your two pairs and sets and, and some straights. But still, you have <clears throat> all the offsuited combos jack ten, all the offsuited combos of ten eight, and these are already. Um, okay, you have some flushes, so, but you still have uh, thirty combos of of busted draws, right? This is a yeah, lot. Yeah, and like on, on the river, if I have like nine seven, nine five, yeah. or any hand like that, I'm just gonna check it, like check well, and see. No, no, you should definitely you, you, you should definitely jam for value with two pairs. Yeah, because yeah, you cover him, shits, you cover him. You don't don't want to do a lot of checking with your value hands. If he checks yeah. back his jack nine, it's gonna be horrible. But you have a shot shot that the hero calls you and you win a bounty. It's just so much EV. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, a good, uh, a good non-blocker hands. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. I think. I, mean, it's... I think. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, he still is gonna have some like, you know, he's flat the button, so he can have eight six suited himself. He's gonna be having two pairs, some some uh, some sets. Yeah. Sure. He can even have something like. Yeah, ace four in clubs. Uh, maybe something like a six in clubs with vector ace ten in clubs. Um, yeah, yeah the, the, the sense I think. Sense. Yeah, I mean, he has to call some nine x so, and, and since he gets a good price, and you're definitely going to be yeah, laughing sure. here. So it's it's a fine call, but just be careful um, that you're not going to be overdoing it because yeah, people really hate folding. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I've seen. Uh, I've seen. I've seen that. I've experienced it. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like, would it be a better play folding? Mm. Um, sorry. Um, uh, checking the river and yeah. just giving up? Yeah. It, in general, you don't not make much EV from bluffing. Uh, this is something yeah. I always try to teach my students that if we would look at the EVs, let's say the river is 43 big blinds, I yeah. would guess you make with your bluffs, I don't know, two, three big blinds. And yeah, with your well. value hands, depend on what hands you have, you make 20 big blinds, 40 big blinds, 60 big blinds on average. No, so sure. that's just to give you an understanding of the ratio between the bluffs and the and the value hands. Yep. Um, any more questions on this hand? Whatever you feel that... Fire or less. <laughs> I don't really have too many questions. Uh, I guess it's pretty straightforward. Um... It's a good flop bet. Out of position, it's important to realize your equity. So you want to take some initiative with your draw. So I like that general approach. Um, I think that's pretty good. And I also think that people do overstep this board. So if he has queen jack, you know, with back to flush draw, I think he's going to be stabbing you forward out these hands. If he has like a, you know, a six with back to flush draw, he can sometimes call, but I, th I think yeah. also a reasonable amount of time he was going to be folding. So... <clears throat> I, I, I do like your race. You're going to have full equity. And once again, you're drawing to the nuts, so totally reasonable. All right, let's have a look. Okay. And do the next one. <clears throat> uh, this one, yeah. Blind I've been, blind. been struggling a ton with those spots. 
What would be your raising range in general here, uh, preflop against a uh, small blind limp? Um, uh, fairly tight. Like, like I'm extremely uncomfortable with blind versus blind spots. Yeah. Yeah, just keep keep going. Um, my my cam is free. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna be. <laughs> I was wondering, like, is it bugged? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like I'm extremely uncomfortable in uh, in blind to blind spots. So right now I'm just I'm just trying to keep it low. Um, I keep keep it small pots, and when I hit, I, I gain chips. Good, uh, but I try not to be the one that puts too much pressure because I don't really handle it too well. Um, so yeah, I try to keep it very. Oops, uh, I try to keep it very tight and uh, and clean in, yeah. in terms of value. <clears throat> Um, I think it's a, a spot where you should be playing a bit more aggressively. Um, I mean, we can just, I'm just going to be open some, some ranges. So maybe it helps a little bit to, yeah. Uh... yeah, let's open this soon. Um, that his, your opponent's range is going to be very wide as well. In general, you never want to be three wedding trash. There's one exception though, that is blind versus blind. Your opponent is going to be having nine, six offs. Four three offs, nine seven offs, uh, you know, jack two suited, and all of these kind of crappy hands. So it's totally reasonable to start raising uh, with crap yourself because you have only one pawn yep. left to act. You have the position advantage, and he's also going to be calling a race with a lot of crap that is going to be missing. So sure. if we look into um, our opponent's limping range, it's probably going to be looking like this, right? And if yeah. you see the just sheer amount of garbage that is in his range it's gonna be limping like jack six off that's what most players do especially in higher stakes you want to be very very aggressive so in position you uh, see that ev this everything that is darker yellow is going to be checking behind everything that is lighter yellow uh let me see yeah everything that is lighter yellow is going to be raising so you see you want to be raising yeah. 10 dues off you want to be raising 10 four off all these hands are a good raises so you've got to be especially with the stack size you're going to be raising very very polarized uh, when you have around True. 25 to 35. You don't want to be raising 9-8 student and then you face an all-in, right? So it's purely just, sure. hey, for forward equity, raise pre-flop, and then if there's like a dry board, you take a, you place a seabed, and you're still going to be generating a lot of forward equity. Um, no. And most players really also struggle from the small one. They have actually exactly the same thoughts as you. Oh, ranges are wide. Yeah. I have jack four suited, or I don't know, jack seven off. They face a race. And they might actually supposed to be calling it according to theory, but they just try to stay away from it. But they still start limping in the first place, and you can actually make a lot of money by putting oh, in a yeah. small race, three, three, three into three and a half big blinds, placing a small seabed, and you don't risk a lot. Again, here, uh, <clears throat> risk is small, reward is not like super big, but it's decent. But still, you don't risk a lot, right? Yeah, sure. No, yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> For sure. I mean, it's, yeah, again, I think it's easy to put yourself in the shoes of the small blind as well, where yeah. you want to you want to do the same, and then you just get played back, and then that's when you you get hurt. Yeah, sure. Um, flop pretty standard. Turn pretty standard. River. Like here, uh, like, yeah, that, that's the thing that I'm wondering about. Where, okay. So they go one two. I think I had I had to call the two streets because everyone is going to yeah bet two no streets doubt. in general, but. But people generally give up the third street, like on the river. So here I'm like, because it's blind versus blind, I'm like, uh, he's, he's not going to have a, a ton of aces in his range. Uh, maybe it's a call. <laughs> because I have, a, I have one pair, it's pretty good. So, yeah, yeah. The, the problem is, if you don't have the deuce and clubs, which blocks, if he has like jack deuce and clubs, you know, it would be... Yeah. If he has nine deuce and clubs, hands like these might be bluffing. Uh, people still bluff a little bit too much with flush draws. Um, then I would probably be calling almost every single time. Um, also, the 10, your, your kicker is pretty good, like in terms not of the suit, but you don't you don't want to have a 9, 8, or 7. A 7 is good, but 8 and 9 is pretty bad um, because what it's going to be is main bluffs, 7, 9, 8, 9, right, mm -hmm. with a gut shot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think if he has something like queen jack, king jack, he might be checking the flop. Um, at least not double brother the yeah. turn, I think. So your 10, I would be calling a king 10, queen 10, jack 10 because he could go for thin value with king 10. You don't raise preflop, so it's very unlikely for you to have an ace. 
Um, yep. So if he has king 10, queen 10, he might be jack 10, he might go for three streets. So I think that having, yeah, if I have a deuce, five, seven, king, queen, jack, I always call it 10. I probably fold my 10, nine and 10, eight. Okay. Right. But the blockers so, are really what's important. Yeah, it, it, it is in, in these spots. And it also helps, helps you to give you, give you a bit more confidence when you don't really know what he's up to. People do really random shit blind versus blind. So I've seen people here triple yeah. burling. I don't know, man, like queen do's off, <laughs> you know? So yeah, just for pressure. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's it's totally okay to call down here. Um, yeah, he has two pair. So okay. be it. Uh, okay. But I definitely agree on you that people in certain spots um they're hesitant to fire the third bear on the third street however on a side boards blind versus blind pe people always have this approach of oh he didn't race he doesn't have an ace so i can go bananas yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's that's or, or at least a, a value hand like that six four um yeah because people can be calling those things but that, that was pretty much my idea of if the guy fires a third bullet on the river i, I still think he's gonna have like a lot of a lot of good hands in his range because yeah he, he probably wants to see a showdown because i don't look very strong either yeah. <laughs> by calling toys so uh, yeah that that was like my reflection at the end of the we watching the hand uh where i know i feel i feel like a bit too weak but in, in terms of blocker with what you said i think it makes sense yeah um, no I, so. I i really like it um i think you played it very well nothing else you can do man Nice. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. And that was from the tournament of our good friend uh, Lex. Are you played against him or? No, it was the, the Lex not live. I, I made a hero ah. call against Lex. And? Not because he was Lex, <laughs> but because the hand made sense. And okay. I was right, which was, uh, which was good. Uh, maybe, maybe I could have uh, put that hand. Maybe I could have sent it to you. That would have been funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was from the the Lex Not Live tournament. Um, I see. The, the, the fifty dollars or whatever it was. Um, that should be good. How how do you how do you approach these spots? What would be your your calling range be like in, uh, in this particular spot here? Um, I would I would call my good dry hands. So my, mm -hmm. my hands work and work and draw and I can, I can that is playable on the plot. Yeah. Um, my the top of my range probably, and mm -hmm. like I, I cannot see how many blinds there is. Uh, he has he has thirty five big blinds and you have fifty two big blinds, so effectively thirty five big blinds. Okay. Yeah, and then I would I would um, go more aggro with the hands that are a bit more in between. Uh, in between all of that. Well, what what that kind of hands be... would you go more aggro with? um like uh jacks ace queens okay um uh depending on how the opponent is playing like those ajax suited uh yeah jacks tens nines those hands i would probably more go more aggro than yeah. um than my aces kings where we just like happy to see your flop and then and then let him barrel yeah um hence that you want to be also playing very aggressively that perform quite okay against the calling range or for example ace four ace five suited because it unblocks yep. his bluffs with the, the most typical bluffs you should be having are hands like um king seven suited queen eight suited like a king ten off these kind of hands so when you have ace four suited it's it's really good to to not block all these crappy hands but on the other side you block his aces his ace king ace queen and if he has sure. a calling hand you have at least an overall card so if you play against someone aggressive let's say 40 big blinds and less ace four like ace deuce to ace five suited are always viable all ins like it's someone um, not even super aggressive this is like pure gto against someone that has bluffs and has value to a decent amount or balanced amount of the time if you play against people that are overly aggressive and they like to three bit a lot and it's with especially with this deck size you can't three bit for that much anymore because otherwise you get punished with four bets sure. You just really want to be jamming those uh, ace four ace five suited, and, and I do it quite a lot, and uh, it, it works yeah, quite well. Sense. Because sometimes people I don't really know ah what what I'm supposed to do with queen nine suited here, queen eight suited. Ah, that's three bit. What I'm supposed to do with my ace nine off are three bit. But then your frequencies are getting very much out of line, very very quick. Because also yeah, sometimes sure. you want to trap with ace kings, right? Especially if you have two stacks that can shove yep. aces kings as a 
flat core here wow works wonders it's it's pretty good so yeah, but then sure. you don't have that many um three bit calls anymore all right let's take a flop queen six three he see bets um, mm -hmm. yeah so now so now here here's my thing mm -hmm. here's my thing that uh, this is why I put, I put the hand uh i put the hand in um I, i've been watching a bit more and playing more with top regs obviously yeah um, and and the thing that uh, I and we have noticed is that they have a higher frequency of fold to see that in, in a lot of pots. And so it looks like the tendency is to keep on playing and like calling see bets, turn bets when you have like a lot of redraws or or that you you can really put a range on the person very specifically. Yeah. Um, and then folding more flops, uh, yeah, folding more c bets in like uh, in, in any type of pot. So here, for example, I obviously have some backdoor, uh, some backdoors, so it's okay. Um, and I can, I mean, a two pair here is going to be good, like almost yeah. always. Um, so I don't remember how many how many blinds did he bet into into the four pot? big blinds into fourteen big blinds. Okay, yeah, so that's low so i think here it's not possible to to fold yeah um but yeah that, that was that was more reflection i was thinking about about like just a one pair with no redraw to just not follow through on many boards because um because you're easily going to be pushed off of the hand um if you just have like a second pair third pair um in, in those in those sort of boards yeah. and scenarios where you're getting when you're facing a three bet pre and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean that's pretty standard anyway. This the day you don't even need to worry about balancing or stats or whatever. If you have a second pair and you face a second bar on a three bet pot and you don't have a redraw, let's say there's the deuce and diamonds and the second bar, yep. even if he just bets half pot, you you have to fold. Um, yeah. So this is something I wouldn't be too concerned about. Uh, because he yeah. also needs to be barreling something like a7, a8, you know, just some. He's yeah. also not going to have a lot of draws. So when the board is not very drawy, people are more hesitant to bluff because they need to, you know, select from a, a range of hands that contains mostly just overcards or one overcard and yeah. um, like an ace high or king high, which most people very very struggle with. So. I do like the approach of even if you slightly overfold, that's totally okay to give up a little bit of EV. Um, tournaments always program provide you an opportunity and then at some point yeah. where you're gonna have a good hand um, it's just your responsibility not to fuck it up before um, yeah, true. so yeah if, if let's say the turn breaks and he keeps burning I'm always calling like even let's say if this is the three diamonds he second birds or if it's like the deuce yeah. I'm also folding against this sizing against his 40% here mm. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think it's also a matter of sizing that yeah. is going gonna, is gonna to change a lot what we're continuing or what we're not good with. So, but um, here now with the additional gut shot, we have to call, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and river, easy forward. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty straightforward. But it, like my, why, why include the hand was, yeah, more the fact of um, the general approach, like of overfolding a bit more. Never to um, to, yeah, to just keep those small blinds that just are gonna add up even in one tournament. Like you can easily save six, seven, eight big blinds very, very quickly by doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, something that I can share based on my experience, and very often, especially when you're downswing, it's it's of course very often we are in downswings, and I have mentioned this, however, in in, in quite many videos. Never forget that. Also for everyone who's watching, you don't don't bullshit yourself by. All right, I just have a downswing. But if you have been losing player the majority of the time, you don't have a downswing. You're just you're a losing player that had a couple of upswings. However, yeah. the other way around, if you have been winning for the most part of the time and now you're in a downswing, people like to like to put things way worse than they actually are it's like oh i don't beat it anymore but they have been winning over yeah. i don't know millions of hands or thousands of hands so it's twisted and yeah. it should be the other way around however when you have a downswing and you face a lot of bad beats 
make sure to always look, okay, what happened before that bad beat? Maybe there were a couple of pots that you could have played it differently that would have saved you five, 10 big blinds that let's say allows you to um, just Not call your pocket eights instead of rejamming it with 20 big blinds or 25 yep. big blinds. So you would have been a little deeper at this point in time and you wouldn't have had rejammed into aces, right? And you would have gotten it away. You would have gotten deeper in the tournament. So this is sure. what most people forget is just focus on that bad beat. But there are like 200 hands that led up to that bad beat and you could have had a different stack size. So it's yeah, easy sure. to easy to blame the bad beat. So uh, it's good that you focus on this, even though this is a very trivial hand from prefab to river and you played it perfectly fine, but it's very, very good and very crucial. And very often just these in these boring hands that there are so many small details uh, that we can talk about that actually gonna have a big impact on how you perform in the tournament. But you always are oh, standard, standard, standard. And then you always focus on these big pots you're not going to see yeah. those small details that actually add up. Small details in 200 yeah, ends leading up to that one pot can have a significant significant impact. So always look at that as well, of course. And um, so go, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. It's, it's something a lot of uh, poker players uh, fuck up or totally neglect. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's important to fix the mistakes that you do the more often. Like the, 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 the frequency of what you're going to see is the most important then. <laughs> Just that one hand where yeah you lose with uh, eighty twenty and you know whatever yeah, <laughs> you yeah. did something Absolutely. it hurts but uh, I mean that's the way it is it is yeah uh, yeah oh, cool I mean uh, I'm happy if, uh, if if it's okay to overfold I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna throw them hands <laughs> yeah I mean um, the win rates in, in tournaments are depends of course on your skill level but you can have 20, 10, 30 percent, 40 percent RRI which is quite a lot in, in sitting goals you have two three four five percent in cash yeah, games sure. you have much smaller win rates of course, of course depends on the stakes but tournaments you can achieve incredible win rates and if you constantly put yourself in these margin spots where let's say the pot is 37 big blinds and you make a hero call that provides you with one big blind in the long run you and yep. you do that quite often don't be surprised that your win rate is barely over zero percent you know so if you always take these super margin spots, then it's going to be quite hard to, to be a, a big winning player. So really make sure to uh, always have a look at what you, how you invest your money. And then I think very good win rates are possible. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Uh, no, not really. Um, I, could, I could be talking about several hands and hands that I hate. But uh, I think this is another point here. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we can uh, do it. You if you have some, if you have some hands, maybe you have a deep run, we can go over tournament. I think people really like these kind of formats, especially for someone that has a different background than poker coming from esports. I know yeah. we also have a lot of viewers that are very, very interested in esports. Um, I mean, there, there are some like I in January I deep run the tournament on Winamax. Um, and I already reviewed reviewed that deep run with a French mm -hmm. player. Yeah, we did it on stream for charity, which was pretty cool. Nice. Uh, there's the the Lex tournament, so the fifty dollars tournament that actually won. So I was full of confidence before scoop, uh, only to be crushed <laughs> for three weeks in a row. <laughs> so it was just like big confidence, and then it went down. Um, yeah, and like it was one deep run. I'm I'm not happy about a call, but I think it's it's very easily solvable about whether it's a right one or not. Uh, it was twelve left of a five hundred scoop. Um. It was just, uh, I mean, we're like, I can just make it quick. We're like six or seven handed. Um, I open with 29 blinds, uh, UTG plus one. Um, everyone, uh, I have ace queen suited. Uh, big blind shoves for 31 big blinds, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I call. And he had ace king. And ace king, yeah. <laughs> and, and very, very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, I'm just a bit unhappy about the call. I feel like like my first instinct was to fold. Mm. I wanted to play a bit. Then it's hard to fold ace queen seated, right? I know, I know. Yeah, it's screwed up. So that's the only thing I was really disappointed in. Is like I feel like I didn't follow what I wanted to do. And I just found reasons, even though he had like, I don't know, 35 DPIP or whatever. Yeah. I was like, uh, uh but uh, it turns out that now, having played for like three weeks in a row, everybody that does that with like 30 blinds, they always have ace king. Yeah. Not a single other hand. 
So, um, so now I know. <laughs> but that's um, the experience yeah, you take those from, yeah. very small spots. Yeah. And even though if they sometimes do it with Ace Jack or maybe an Ace Eight suited, it's not going to be printing a lot. It's just going to be yeah. quite marginal with the stack that you have. Um, so yeah, great yeah, man. No, but that's it. That's, that's thanks, it. thanks for joining me, providing us with some hands. Uh, if you guys have any questions for um, MBK or questions regarding the hands, feel free to drop it in the comments. Make sure to follow him yep. also on his uh, social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere, uh, I mean, of course. Thank you very much for- Don't follow, don't forget to follow this. When one of the tournaments, uh, do you, do you say any info when the Counter-Strike tournaments are returning to its regular, reg, so regular, life. regular schedule around like LAN events, live, live events? Yeah, LAN events are still very much in the blur. We have no mm. real idea on when it's coming back. Um, however, online there is a ton of tournaments going on. Yeah, I see. It just, it just keeps on playing nonstop. Um, but yeah, for, uh, for for LAN events and actual physical tournaments, it's it's a mess. Uh, yeah. No real idea when it's going to come back. We don't know as players. Tournament organizers are not sure either. There's still a discussion on when there's a possibility of making it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're still far from resolving that, that problem. So yeah. uh, just, just going to stay tuned and see and see what happens, what the industry does. Great. It was a pleasure. Thank you guys for tuning Likewise. in. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you.